and the Douglas City School System, and we want to welcome you to this edition of Leading and Learning. Uh, we're so uh, very honored and excited to have with us Dr. Steve Maletto. Uh, welcome to Leading and Learning, and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and you being the executive director of the Heart of Georgia RISA here in, in, in our Dublin Lawrence community. Well, thank you, Dr. Williams. I appreciate you having me here. And uh, we, uh, the Heart of Georgia RISA is a, is a team that works to support, serve and support the 10 school systems of our RISA district, our RISA region. And uh, uh, myself, this is my 31st year in public education in the state of Georgia, and my uh, sixth year at, as RISA director, and uh, enjoy working with the team that I have and uh, just trying to figure out how to help the school systems. Well, certainly we're glad to have you here uh, directing uh, the leading and the learning uh, for 10 school systems uh, that we serve. Uh, we know that consists of Pulaski, uh, Bleckley, uh, consists of uh, Wilcox, uh, Telfair, uh, Wheeler, uh, Lawrence County, Dublin City, uh, Trutlin County, uh, Montgomery County. And uh, so we're very excited about all the school systems that are served in the heart of Georgia Risa. So tell us a little bit about um, uh, the heart of Georgia Risa, uh, how we uh, ended up at here at uh, what used to be Saxon Heights Elementary in the Dublin City School System. Talk a little bit about uh, Risa and that transition. Okay, well, it's, we're working on our second year, we're almost at the conclusion of our second year in, our, in the facility that used to be Saxon Heights. And uh, a couple years ago, the school board, the, the school board, the, the uh, Risa board decided that they wanted to uh, um, change the location uh, of, the, of the RISA, where it was located. Um, it previously was located in its, um, its other community for 50 years in that community. The last building for about 25 years. And uh, um, decided that uh, wanted to, to move, the board decided that they wanted to move. And uh, um, after a, uh, um, looking at different places and different bids by different communities, um, they chose Dublin. Okay. Uh, well, we're very excited to have uh, the opportunity to uh, 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 welcome Risa here uh, to the Dublin Lawrence community. And again, we have 10 different school systems that drive in and that come in and that the teachers receive their professional learning. Uh, they continue to sharpen their saw here at what used to be uh, the old Saxon Heights Elementary School building. So talk to us a little bit about uh, what the, the Heart of Georgia Risa Agency is all about and, and what it offers to uh, teachers so that they can offer to students. Okay, well, first of all, um, we are about service and support for our school systems. So basically, the uh, systems, um, the first way we work is the systems ask, the superintendents meeting as a board might ask, uh, hey, can you do this? And we say yes, and then we figure out how to do it. Right. <laughs> and that pretty much <laughs> sums up what, our, <laughs> what we are all about. And, uh, and so whether it's curriculum instruction, whether it's help with Medicaid, whether it's help with fingerprinting, um, there are many different ways that we help our school systems out. And, you know, with the building itself, it is a training facility. That's how, you know, what we, um, the vision of it is. And we have uh, an administrative side, we have a, a financial side, and then we have a, uh, um, the training facility itself, which are the, the rooms that can be used um, by our systems and the teachers to, uh, um, for the different uh, training programs that we br bring into the building. Um, whether it's technology, whether it's uh, in, um, classroom management, whether it's instruction, whatever it is that we're uh, talking about, uh, whether it's learning how to um, interpret student data. I mean, we do a lot of this. And uh, we also have a resource room, which is designed, eventually, it's, it's still a work in progress, but eventually uh, teachers will be able to access a library as well as uh, different uh, um, types of uh, um, classroom manipulatives and things that they can use with their students in that room that'll help them in the classroom. We also have uh, um, a lot of technology that's available in this building. We uh, don't uh, have hardwired labs. We made a choice to go with uh, making any part of this facility usable um, as a classroom. So we have um, mobile Chromebook labs that can be wheeled into any of the different rooms depending on what type of training is going on and what the instructor needs the students to have access to. And, uh, and the students we're talking about in this case are teachers and administrators, superintendents and so forth. Mm -hmm. So. We also, as a note, are a regional facility. So we uh, actually not only bring in uh, teachers and administrators from all over our districts, from our 10 re um, districts, we uh, also bring in from across the state um, any number of different groups, whether it's the nurses, um, whether it's uh, curriculum instruction people from the Department of Education at the state level. There's different groups that we bring in 
um, from across the state who meet here. Yeah, and so that's pretty exciting. Uh, this building has a regional flavor, uh, it draws from all across. We're also very excited to have uh, the Dublin Police Department uh, with their workout facilities and such on campus. So this has certainly been a, a great uh, utilization of our old Saxon Heights building, the Dublin City School System. And what you said about the training for teachers and also the regional flavor uh, from the Department of Education coming in and doing certain trainings here uh, is tremendous. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in to Leading and Learning. Uh, we're getting ready for our tour of the building. And so after the break, we'll be right back. changed the uh, configuration of the building so that it can be used as a uh, training facility and so right now we're standing in what used to be the media center we call this D22 now and uh, D22 we took out all the stuff that would make it look like a media center and uh, we've made it we brought in tables and chairs so that it can be very flexible in how it's set up it, you know however the presenter wants to have it if they want to move the tables around if they don't want to have the tables if they want to put the chairs in a circle if they don't want to do it whatever even with the technology it's meant to be flexible in the way it's set up we've had as many as 85 people in this in uh, what used to be the media center in here for training and i i believe we could have as many as 125. Um, it's a very popular place in our uh, facility as requested by most of our presenters um, if we can have this open for them um, so this is the uh, what used to be the media center d22 It's my kind of Van Gogh, and you can play Minecraft, even if your name was Chobo. Blow that thing, girl! Woo! It's so good. Now we'll get funky. Let's get funky. Here we go. Clay Stanlin from back in the early 90s, uh, then came along uh, John Strickland, uh, and then after John in the mid-2000s, uh, Matthew Starley. And so this, this gym brings back a lot of memories. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. So how, how many people can we actually sit here in, in, in this uh, facility? 300. 300, wow. And probably more if we, uh, <laughs> uh, but right now, 300 very comfortably, wow. just like this setup right here. We could put in a lot more if we just did right. it in rows of chairs. Right. So we see the stage where presenters uh, can definitely uh, be seen in, in their presentations and for effective delivery. Uh, but this is amazing. Very, very awesome. I, I can see uh, the banquet style set up with the tables. And so it's eventually we're going to, it's a work in progress. We have uh, 
Um, I, I'm working now to uh, um, change out the lights. We have, uh, we're going to work with Georgia Power to uh, get that little bonus there that we can and we'll change them out to LEDs. So uh, some of the humming you hear as well as the type of lights that are wow. in here that will make it better for uh, training um, with the LEDs. We also have uh, um, another aspect that's coming to this facility is a new audiovisual system so that instead of a small PA system, we'll actually um, have a system that will uh, project the images that anywhere in here you could look at the two wow. main walls wow. and then hear the presenter no matter where they walk. Wow. And this is, you know, very cool because one thing uh, during our uh, process of reconfiguration as we looked at our uh, goal number two in the Dublin City School System, efficient and effective of, of uses of environments and resources. So we decided not to use this location, but we promised the community uh, that we would, uh, you know, uh, not let this become a dilapidated property. And so we really appreciate, you know, all the thought process and everything that's going on on behalf of the heart of George Reese in this building. Well, that's awesome. We're, we're doing, doing our best. We got, uh, um, one of the things I said earlier was we have regional meetings that come here and right now we're working, this, we've got the attention of the state and we're hoping to, uh, to uh, bring a few more of those regional groups here so more people coming into Dublin and uh, as they see what we can offer them for meeting because we're, you know, this building is only two miles off the interstate. Right. Right, and you have a couple of different access points from the interstate. You have the uh, exit 51 and also exit 54 over here, so it's a pretty cool location. It really uh, is. And you want to show us a few other areas? Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Mileto, as we, we continue our, our tour, uh, it is just absolutely amazing. I remember on this end of the building, this was a, a kindergarten class, uh, and uh, man, just to see the transformation into the uh, board of control room where our 10 superintendents and yourself, we sit down and, and uh, we uh, uh, come up with ideas and, and, and decisions on uh, what's best for children and, uh, throughout our heart of Georgia uh, uh, recent. Talk, talk to us a little, about, about, a little bit about your role as the recent director and how it relates to the Board of Control, which is comprised of the 10 superintendents from the heart of Georgia recent. Well, a big part of it is, and it's something that I said earlier, which is uh, um, the board, you know, we, the RESA exists to, to figure out how to serve and support the school systems. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, uh, the board will ask um, questions different, sometimes it comes as a uh, a suggestion as a whole from the board or sometimes it comes from um, independent you know just um, different superintendents individually right. and um, but basically they uh, they might ask us hey can you help us with this because this is what we want to try and do and right. and I try as much as possible to say yes and then right. go outside and talk with my team and say hey, hey this is what I said we could do can we do it <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we just kind of make it happen and that's uh, and we have lots of you know other uh, um, support networks that we reach out to and we bring in that help to to help the school systems, uh, um, whether it's school improvement, whether it's something with their, uh, um, some sort of training or, uh, you know, whatever it is that they're needing assistance with, we try to figure out how to make it happen. Well, case in point, this upcoming Monday, uh, the Brian Buffington, uh, I made a request. Uh, you, we shared it with the other superintendents, and he's coming to do some training on QR codes and how we can use those to really uh, help impact uh, literacy uh, throughout the 10 school systems. Uh, that was represented here, but that was something that I approached you with and we shared it with the other superintendents as well And so that's just an example of, of what you're talking about uh, You know reflecting back as a practicing superintendent uh, things such as the crucial conversations uh, that was uh, helpful uh, uh, Certainly Bobby Smith and, and, and looking at the data as it pertains to the CCRFI uh, classroom management course offerings uh, Mark Wilson his work with assistant principals and, and principals in uh, what we've seen today uh, in the uh, old media center uh, with uh, GLRS, with the co-teaching model, is, is just some examples. But uh, again, we appreciate the job that you're doing as as, uh, as a recent director and how you totally transformed this building that we just can't thank you enough for uh, your leadership and Risa being here. And it's also good to have the Dublin Police Department on campus with their workout and, and uh, and so we're just very excited about what we see. Are there any other parts of the building that you want to show us? 
Well, I think uh, I think we had a good, pretty good tour. We do have some areas that are still a work in progress. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what used to be the cafeteria is uh, is now a place where we we bring people into. It's a training room, and uh, um, that way they can get messy in there. And uh, you know, if they need to make messes or whatever, we also use it as a place to have. Uh, um, we have bigger groups that have food that's brought in and so forth and because of the floor. We have a teacher resource room, which is a, also a work in progress, but eventually the uh, teachers will be able to, to check uh, everything from books to uh, uh, manipulatives for the math class to uh, um, using uh, construction paper and different types of uh, um, other types of resources that will be in that, class, in that room that they'll be able to use. Um, but I, I appreciate you coming to visit us today, and yes, uh, thank you very much. Well, we appreciate the tour, and uh, after the break, we'll be right back uh, when we will discuss our, our final thoughts and as well as uh, the future uh, as we look at serving and supporting the 10 school uh, systems of the uh, heart of Georgia Reese. We'll listen to Dr. Maletto for some future plans. <music> Uh, our guest today, Dr. Steve Maletto, uh, the executive director of the Heart of Georgia Risa, uh, located on Smith Street uh, in the old Saxon Heights building. And uh, as we wrap up the show today, uh, we want to talk about uh, the Heart of Georgia Risa's uh, long range uh, and, and medium range goals uh, for impacting education in our region. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it, Dr. Williams, and I appreciate you being here. We've got uh, you know, we've got a couple uh, projects that are in process, and uh, part of it is technology um, related. We have uh, um, in what used to be the gym and the media center, we're working on uh, um, upgrading audio visual so that uh, um, anywhere in that what was the gym, um, you'll be able to have a large, you know, very large group, like I said, about 300 in there, be able to be trained. Um, we're going to uh, um, it'll have digital projection um, units in there that will uh, should last for a very long time. Um, in, throughout the building we have, we utilize uh, um, Chromebooks and current technology trying to stay up with uh, uh, what is current and the, the teachers are using and the school systems are using. In uh, um, what used to be the media center we're working on and in the, the, the boardroom we're working on bringing in a system that will allow a trainer to stay, let's say they're in North Carolina or in Illinois or something like that, they'll be able to stay there and communicate with the, the people who are in the class but not by passing around a microphone, simply by the uh, image will be projected on the screen and she or he will be able to talk to the class and they'll just be able to talk because it'll be, the whole room will be uh, set up to be live and, uh, and speakers used and that, that's, that's not too far off, that's coming right around the corner. Um, you know, a big part of what we do, uh, I also have a work in progress of a, uh, um, a, tech, a, a video room, if you will. It's, uh, um, it's meant to be a, uh, used as a, uh, a place where you could set up a temporary studio and teachers or administrators could use it to get word out to others. But the big thing is, is just trying to figure out what our systems need us to do, working on that and, uh, and uh, bringing um, those resources to our, to our RISA region. Wow, uh, very exciting things going on here uh, at the heart of Georgia Risa. Uh, again, we have a lot of things going on from the things that we're doing uh, to impact uh, a teacher or administrator's or superintendent's uh, ability uh, to help uh, their students uh, be cutting edge, uh, as well as the things we have going with our police department uh, and those type of things that also participate uh, on this campus. And Dr. Maletta, we thank you for your leadership. Uh, we thank you uh, for Heart of Georgia Risa uh, being a part of our community. We know that also when teachers leave here, they're going to buy some gas probably and get something to eat. Most definitely. And so that helps out uh, the local economy as well. So it's a lot of things that are, uh, are interdependent on, on Risa's existence here. And we certainly uh, thank you for what you have done to transform the old Saxon building into the Heart of Georgia Risa. Thank you for being with us on Leading and Learning. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 